Welcome to FX Currency in Play. I'm joined by Charlie um, from Edison. <laughs> Let's go again. Sorry, I've got me. FX yeah, I'm sorry. He's, he's laughing at me. <clears throat> right, who are you? Uh, Charlie Gibson, head of mining Edison. Or just from, maybe from Edison, because head of mining might sound odd. If... Let's say Edison. Um, FX Street, what are we FX Street currency in play? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to FX Street Currency in Play. I am joined by Charlie Gibson from Edison, making his debut here. Morning to you, Charlie. Very good morning to you, Moose. Right, let's kick off with the top trends. Some headlines here. Bank of England expects 72 votes in favour of rates unchanged, called it a TDS. Obviously, a inflation number 2.9% has got everyone thinking that rates may go up before 2019. I don't think it's got anyone thinking that, really. I mean, I suppose it increases the possibility, doesn't it? But, you know, all the noise is coming out of the Bank of England suggests to me there is no chance of the rates going up in what you might call the foreseeable future. So, yes, 2019, maybe that's not the foreseeable future. Maybe that's beyond that. I'm quite surprised there are two people in there who are presumably, I imagine, more hawks than doves, um, suggesting that, that interest rates should go up now. But, but to be fair, it is above the Bank of England's target rate, isn't it? it so, is. so in the normal course of events, yes, you would expect interest rates to rise, but of course, we're not in normal times. Do they actually get a quill pen out and actually does Carney have to write a, a nice document? Well, I, I, I assume what he does is he just he, he gets his old Word document out and he just changes the date <laughs> <laughs> and he whips it off to the chance of the exchequer. Right, in terms of options, my specialised subject, um, in terms of the Japanese yen, bearish bets continue to rise. So I guess everyone's buying put options. Um, in terms of Australia, strong employment report from August, according to Westpac. So they're the top trends. So let's go into some nitty gritty. Um, in terms of commodity prices, performances, you said off air, that effectively these are all currency plays. What well, you certainly, all? you know, gold is a currency, isn't it? I mean, in any way you look at it. But I just wanted to highlight, you know, what's going on in, in, in commodities generally, because an awful lot of it does depend on what's happening to the US dollar. But there's another trend in there, and that's steel additives. And everyone's got used to this idea that the Chinese are going to cut steel production. So iron ore has been weak, or, or, you know, it was for the first eight months of the year year um, and a lot of nickel was weak for eight months of the year actually steel production in China is still quite high right in so far as they are reducing um, uh, production they are also uh, they're also reducing their production of additives, everything along the supply chain as well. So coal, they're reducing the pr pr production of that primary production. Uh, or iron ore, they're producing pri primary production of that. So whereas we're everyone you know, in their heads at the beginning of the year was thinking that supply will stay the same and demand will come down, actually what's happened is, is that demand has come down but supply has come down arguably even more. So you've got these tremendous uh, reactions like that. Vanadium is the top one there. What is uh, that used for, Charlie? Vanadium is primarily a steel additive, but what I was going to say is there is another use for it as well, and that is in energy storage, uh, grid-scale energy storage, where because vanadium exists in several oxidation states, you can use it in a, what is effectively a very large-scale battery. So as well as there being a squeeze in vanadium at the moment, and there are also additional supply-side squeezes as well, because it comes as a, a, as a by product of uh, magnetite uh, production as well, um, or magnetite processing. So you've got a supply side squeeze, you've got demand is still fairly strong, you've got this new demand in terms of renewable energy, and there you can see. So that, that basically, it is up 150% so far this year. So, you know, dwarfing anything, um, you know, anything comparable either, you know, as far as I can see, commodities, equities, um, or even currencies for that matter. But you can see also other metals in there which are steel additives, things like nickel. Now, nickel had a pretty pretty poor start to the year, but you can see it's now above the average, so it's now outperforming gold. And and you see this, this prime coking coal, again, I mean, it had a fantastic last year, so it had a weak beginning, but ever since the beginning of uh, July, you've seen it turn upwards, and actually now it's barely down for the year at all. So all of these things are beginning to turn. Even though and all, there, which was a laggard, and everybody said, you know, from, from the middle of last year, iron ore is the worst possible investment, is now, you know, all right, it's down 9% on the year, but everyone thought it was going to be down more like 30%. Finally on this slide, gold, higher year end, lower year end? Uh, oh, you know, it all depends on the geopolitics a little bit. Yeah. I think that where gold is at the moment, which is about 1322, is about right. My actual forecast in nominal terms is about 1334. So I reckon gold is probably roughly in where the zone. It, where, in the zone, exactly. OK, let's talk South Korea. Um, what's caught your attention on this chart? Well, it's just how grown up it is. So, so you know, you've got uh, nuclear weapons being exploded next door in North Korea. You've got missiles flying over you. 
you know, you know, I can't help thinking if we were in the UK and, and France was exploding, you know, unexpected, uh, unexplained nuclear bombs and sending you know, missiles. Permanent over, fast market, uh, wouldn't yeah, they? exactly. And look how grown up that is. You can't, you know, I was expecting to see when I looked at this some huge dislocation somewhere where the the the, the Korean won devalued by you know twenty percent in a day, and absolutely nothing. You know, I think you know, isn't that a beautiful flag formation? Yeah. And um, you know. What I would say, if I was looking at the short term, long term, um, you know, things can only get better. If, if things get worse from where they are, then we're not going to be worried about currencies. They're not going to be our problem. Yep. Things can therefore only get better as far as we're concerned yep. within the normal course of events. Uh, not only that, but it should be a fundamentally strong currency. South Korea, credit a nation. So I would be buying the South Korean one in contrast to the Japanese yen. Understood. Right, let's move on to the Great British Pound. Is it a Great British Pound against the Euro one-year chart? Um, just ticking up a smidge. What are your thoughts, sir? Yeah, well, I, I, that, that was the interesting thing that, that, that occurred to me, is it was that tick up, because, you know, if you look back longer, you know, you'll see that, that it started at 150 euros to the pound, and then, all right, there's that crash in I could afford to go to Europe, then. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Then we bounced back to 150, and then we've been on this declining sort of trend ever since. But look at that bounce off 108. Now, you know, I'm not a chartist, but we do seem to be testing these bottoms, which are close to parity. And, you know, if you go to various airports, you'll get less than one euro. Southampton is particularly bad. <laughs> you are, where you're getting sort of 125 in the wrong direction almost. But, you know, that little bounce there, yes, do I think that sterling probably um, in it fundamentally, should it be weak against the euro? Yes, because we won't run a trade deficit relative to them. However, we've got that little bounce there. And actually, in the short term, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not normally, I don't normally go against the fundamentals by, like this, but I would be a buyer of sterling. A buyer of sterling. Right, let's wrap up with the economic calendar. Um, today, we've got the Bank of England interest rate decisions. In terms of the US, we've got the weekly jobless claims, the consumer price index. In Germany, we've got the President of Weimann speech. And finally, we've got the business PMI in New Zealand. A final thought of the day. A final thought of the day. What, what, what should we be thinking about, Brexit? No, we should be thinking about football, shouldn't we? Beginning think, of the season. I don't do football anymore. <laughs> um, Charlie Gibson from Edison, thank you very much indeed.